Oh yeah, welcome back. All right, today I'm making some decisions, uh, and none of them affect us right now. <laughs> I am moving things here and there. Uh, we are going to sell the sprayer because next year, oh, I'm going to buy a weeder. Uh, Osa, 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 pointed out that uh, you get um, Osa, my friend from from the east, uh, pointed out that uh, something. What did he point out? He pointed out that thingamajigger, uh, you have a uh, problem. So if I spray for weeds and then spray fertilizer at the same time, what happens is we get a patchy mess that looks like this. Uh, now, I'm stage three on all my fertilization, so we're good there. But you can see here where I had sprayed for weeds, there's patches of stage two fertilization. I'm just going to leave it for now. It's not the end of the world. I'm not crying about it. But the bottom line is, um, yeah, it's not. I'm not getting the coverage that I wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up selling the sprayer. I'm going to actually buy one of those Borgo uh, wide weeders. Um, how do I put this in here? Like this? Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm trying to move these in. I, I figured out, somebody also helped me figure out how to use this uh, to get the things out. You can see here I've got them out now. I'm going to just put them back, but I needed to know how to do that. I didn't know. Now I do. So you don't have to really stack them. You just dump them. Man, it is April 1st, April Fool's Day today, and it is snowing. As a as a complete joke to the Cleveland area, It we have a blizzard going on right now. Now, I will say this. My son, Mark, 25 years ago, well, 24 years, 20, yeah, 24 years in a certain 300 some odd days. He's, uh, he'll be um, 25 in a couple days here. He was born on April 6th, and it was 92 degrees. It was like a record-setting temperature. And then we had a blizzard the next day. So I always remember there's at least one more good snowstorm to be had when we get into April every year here in the uh, greater northeastern Ohio area. <laughs> and so it snowed all night, and we had snow all over the ground this morning, and now we're having a lake effect snow squall, and it's coming down in buckets outside. The ground's already covered in snow. <laughs> Dang. And it's making me very nappy. I'm feeling like a nap would not be a bad decision today, uh, but I'm not. I'm going to resist for a while. So we've gone from early spring to late spring. We got done everything I think we're going to get done until harvest. So it's pretty much just hang out and wait at this point. Except for we need to check our... Hang on, let's run over and check our silage. If it's late spring, they might be have turned to silage at this point. Let's see. Nope. Still grass. So it has not... It's not fertilized or silaged yet. And that's okay. It's, uh, believe it. Once again, though, our little little friend is helping out, so. I love the fact that we can just part, tuck this in right here. This is exactly what this space was designed for. How, did you hear the little belt squeal there? I was like, Nurr. okay. So, um, what do we do now? Well, I guess we're just gonna hang out because the crops have popped, and now it's just a matter of waiting. So, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward a little bit of time, and we'll get to the next stage. I'm gonna keep an eye open here. We probably are gonna have more weeds pop, but that way, next year, if we buy, and this is what I'm looking at buying. Um, let's see here, weeders. We'll get one of these huge Borgo. It's actually not that expensive. Um, wow. I mean, we could run one. 60,000. That would leave us a 17 for the year. I think we're all set. Why don't we run one and just do it? I don't know if we can, though. If we fertilized already, I don't think we can. So we're just going to leave it. I'll have to wait till next year because I think it has to be run during the first stage of growth. So right when this, this happens, 
we would run it. And then we'll come back after that next stage when this is one more stage up and we'll fertilize. But I think that um, the weeding technically needs to be done during this stage. So, all right, we'll just hang on. I'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward time a bit and we'll get to the next section. Now, here's a weird thing. I thought that this thing, I'm going to slow time down, slow down, slow down, slow down. There we go. I thought this field was done, but it's not. The I never finished this base field. This is all 66s all the way across. So I think maybe we'll wait till actually the next stage to do that. So that means uh, hey, I, could, I could technically weed that. I don't know what to do. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. We're going to go ahead and get the weeder. Um, and I think I'm just going to lease it this year. Um, how many horsepower? 350. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to – how much does it lease? 3,000? Well, let's go ahead and do that. That's cheap, and it'll get us – I'm going to weed that field. I don't think the other fields can be done, unfortunately. But we're going to get that. Let's go ahead and get that thing going. Um, <laughs> so we'll run down to the shop, pick up the weeder, get that field weeded, and then we'll, we're going to wait till next turn and we'll spray that field. Serious grass machine. <sighs> that thing is huge. <laughs> cool stuff. But it's got a nice reach. That's why I picked it out because it's, you know, I, I think that uh, for the size of our farm, we're going to need something huge like that. It's just huge. The hard part is knowing where you've been and where you're going. Look at the spread on that thing, though. It's freaking huge. So finally, after months of having the Borgo pack, actually probably a year, I'm actually using it for something. Once again, the downside is I don't know that we're going to actually be able to see where we've been. So you're probably going to have to hire a worker. Can you do it? Nope, the workers can't do it either. Since there's no weeds on the field, this is going to be a weird thing. Let's see if this works, which is another good reason to weed with this. This might prove to us, too, that we need to spray for weeds instead of using this. Because if you spray for weeds, you can see the ground color change. And so then you know it's where you've been. And I don't know how we're going to determine where I've been on this because it's not showing us. It won't show us on the map. And it's not showing us here. So that's... So the Borgo actually probably works better for the in-game weeds where you have the whole field getting weeded and then you can see where you've been and where you haven't been. This, this, I don't think this is going to work. I think we're going to have to spray for weeds. So if we want weeds to never show up, we need to spray the entire fields with herbicide. And that seems like such a waste. So I think 
Spot weeding is probably the best way to go. Um, because once again, if I can't hire a worker to do it, I have no idea. This is where the GPS mod would come in handy because you could just follow the GPS lines and know that by following those lines, you are getting the whole field. So maybe that's if we do that. Let's just see what happens, too, though. I'm going to try to get as much of the field as I can this way um, since I don't have the GPS mod installed. And I'm going to see if if the weeds pop back up on this field after we do this or if there's no weeds on the field but we do get weeds on the other fields it'll be an interesting experiment but if that's the case we will get the gps mod installed and we'll have to install gps on this tractor and we'll follow the pretty little lines and get it all done like this like how do I tell where I've been I honestly can't even tell if I'm going straight <laughs> or if I'm slowly chopping off a side of the field oh, it's not going to work well and the harder thing is this has to be done during the first stage So after this pass, I'm just going to leave it. We'll see if any weeds pop up on these two passes. Uh, and if we see them, then we'll know that it didn't work. If we don't see them, but we see them elsewhere, we'll know that it did work. If it does work, um, I'll have to install the GPS mod, and we'll have to learn how to use it. Uh, which I kind of know how already. T Tailoa and, and JC showed me how to do it. So... It's not that difficult, but it's a little difficult. Um, so anyway. There's that. <laughs> Looks like we're going pretty straight, so that's good. All right, I'm going to speed time up, too, while we're waiting, since we're just doing this last pass. So it was a $3,000 experiment. Let's see how this experiment turns out. I think it's probably not going to turn out that great, but we'll, we'll find out. Uh, by the time I get to the end of this field, it's going to be night. But the nice thing about doing it this way is it's free. You don't have to buy herbicide. Herbicide is expensive. But then again, if you spot do it, that's not bad either. You know, I mean, it's just it makes it so the whole field doesn't get fertilized. So I don't know. It seems like saving money and spot weeding is a better alternative than spending a ton of money on herbicide because you're only going to. The way that the weeds grow here, they're like they do that clump thing. So I don't know. We'll call the dealership and let them know that that's ready for pickup. Um, but that's, yeah, we'll see. I don't think that's going to be a viable option for us. Though, like I said, if we do the GPS mod, then yes. But otherwise, I don't think we can use that. So, it was worth a try. I would be back. Aye. So, the weeds have grown on this field. That's good news, though, because let's go see our test spot and see how that did. Weed, weed growage is a pain. Nope. It looks like there's weeds grown right where we weeded yesterday. Could be wrong. Nope, I'm not wrong. Yep. So 
that weeder is completely useless. Um, so we're just going to have to spot weed, and that's how it's going to have to go. We'll get as many as we can. Oh. This game needs a crop duster <laughs> or a, a weeding drone <laughs> like they do in, uh, was it in China where they use drones to weed? That would be pretty cool. So we're gonna head get we're gonna grab this tractor and do some spraying. So I guess we'll just keep the kit the way it is. The way I had it initially laid out is the way that it works the best. Sometimes you just pick a winner, or at least you don't screw up. Uh, we got two herbicides. Yeah, we'll grab the other one because that was almost empty. Oh, this is in the way. Will that fix it? Yes. Oh, wait. Is there more? Wait, I thought it said there was two. Hmm. I'm so confused. There's another one there. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just leave it. It's got that's got sixteen hundred in it, so we'll leave it for later. But that was a good test. I'm glad we did that. The thing that sucks is in the next stage of growth it's gonna be a lot harder to see the weeds. I guess we have the charts, though, that show us where they're at, but. Here's what makes fertilizing hard, too, because these weeds are, but I guess you can kill weeds in any stage but the final stage, so let them grow. Just got to kind of weave back and forth. I see some over there. I haven't really seen much of anything else. There's some right there. Kill them all. Junk, 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 Oh, there's a bunch. Look at that. My weeders bringing all the boys to the yard, and they're like, man, those are some weeds. <laughs> this is the exciting part. Thrill as Arthur kills weeds. Once again, the only thing I don't like like about the weed spot hunting is that it's not really how you do it. In real life, they just they do spray the whole crop. And I wonder, probably the weeds do probably come back, don't they? Even though they've sprayed. All right, next field. <laughs> time this thing gets folded up, I'll need to unfold it again. Might as well just... So we have daily tasks and chores to complete, and that includes searching the fields for weeds. 
Weed Patrol. Uh oh. I know I saw some. Where did they go? Oh, there they are. Just that little spot right there. <laughs> Creature report. Ah, uh, the Aquanauts. Now, see, there's nothing else here, though, surprisingly, or not surprisingly. That could have also been a spot that I missed, though, so that's the hard part. See, there's nothing here. Now, oh, but no, there's some right there, and I know for a fact I got that section. Uh, so my, my ploy did not work. But really, not much action going on here with the weeds. There's That was it. Like, pretty much, you can see the rest of the fields. Kind of acne-free here. Pimple-free. So that's good. It's still late spring. <sighs> slow The slow pace of farm life. Basically waiting for things to grow. That's why farmers have second and third jobs usually. Now we need to head back to the farm. There's one more field we need to scan. What we need and they have not implemented in this game is a weed tracking drone. For hot spots. So I figured out my, my the owner of the wedding company that I work for and I were looking at different things that we could do with drones. He was willing to invest quite a bit of money um, in checking out like using drones for farming. But what we found was that one, farmers don't seem super interested in it. Um, and two, it doesn't necessarily work. See, they make all this imaging software for drones that fly up and, you know, they check a field and see what the status is. But the problem is that uh, the status doesn't allow farmers necessarily to see what's really going on because as the day progresses, the field temperatures change across the field. And that when you're scanning for uh, problems in the field, you need to get up to date instant whoops, instantaneous information about uh, what's going on on the field. It can't be like, okay, so what the drone does is a drone will fly up and it flies a back and forth pattern over the field. And it will do that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then come back with all the data. But that flight could take an hour, you know, or two hours or, you know, 45 minutes. It has to fly back and forth. And each, the drones that they have, the batteries are great. Uh, they do last that long usually because it's a prop plane that has low power. And it just cruises back and forth and back and forth with the glider-like you know, accuracy. But the problem is that you get an image that takes three hours to create. So the field has changed temperature while you're flying back and forth. And so you don't get an accurate read on what the actual temperature of the field is. What you have to do, and this is one farmer that I met was doing this, and then he was selling the services, he flies up to like five, 6,000 feet above the whole field so you can see it all at once and then uses a thermal imaging camera to take one image. And what that gives you is a single, it all happened at once image of the field. And that's what farmers actually need to see to see what the correct heat problem is because the drone image will not do that because you're going back and forth and back and forth. It's not an instantaneous shot. So... I thought that that was interesting because that changes everything. And so the drones really aren't good. They, even though they have the equipment, farmers are saying that they really don't, they're not going to use it because it's not accurate. So what we need are drones that fly. But here's the problem then, okay? The legal limit for a drone to fly, the height is going to be um, 400 feet because general aviation starts at 500 feet. So 100 feet below, that's where drones are allowed to fly. And so... You can't legally get a drone that's automated that will fly, or even non-automated, that's allowed anywhere over 400 feet. So if you need to get up to 4,000 feet to do the uh, 
a check like that, you can't do it. And so um, it's a bit of a problem, and it makes it so that we can't really use it for what we wanted to do. And so I was a little bit disappointed about that because I was excited about trying to get uh, that business started and, you know, really helping out the farming community, plus being involved in something that I love, both droning and farming. You know, but it just it didn't work out. So um, if my wife and I move out to the, a farming community, I would like to get involved, though, by you know, offering my services to people so that they can see what we do and possibly using us to, um, you know, what the frick is that? Did you see that giant shadow? It looked like a hot air balloon, but I don't, I don't see any. Hot oh, there is one. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. That freaked me out. Um, anyway, okay. Oh, but silage now. Yay, so we can start selling this off. Where? Who's going to buy our silage? Uh, oh, yeah, and you can see their 15 is not fertilized because I'm an idiot. I'll, I'll wait till the next stage to do it. Um, who buys? Who will buy our sweet, fresh silage? Ugh. Every time you go to that button, I've got too many mods, and the game freezes. This makes me crazy. <sighs> I need the dollar sign one. Can I please use my computer again? Farm Sam. Okay. Wait. Okay, crop prices. There we go. We need to see what our silage is. Is that manures? Mm, I think that's manure. Yeah. Ninety-six dollars uh, at Mish. Why would the fabric place buy silage? But Mush. Mishfoot. Footer. Mishfooter fabric. <laughs> Mishfooter fabric. Oh, it's close. That's good news. So let's go ahead and get start delivering silage, and let's see how much money we make. And I'm going to, oh, slow time down, Arthur. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. We can run it at 5x. Actually, though, it's going to be night really quick, but okay, that's all right. We can always do some sales tomorrow, too. <laughs> I'm going to just sell these three off to clear the thingy. Of course, that's a bad idea. Oh, no, bales, that's right. Bales don't change price. I forgot about that. So they're always going to be that. I don't even know if we can sell it there. We'll have to see. Sometimes you get to these things and it's like this type of object is not accepted here. So. Wait, let's just double check. It doesn't say what they are. It says round bale. Round bale. Oh, look, at there's a little horsey playground. Every farm map should have that. Oh, wait. They almost all do now. Uh, so here's the Mission Mishimuskin Fabrica. It's this side. And what do they fabrica? I don't know what they fabrica, but there it is. Oh, okay, so we got to come in over here. And is there an exit on the other side? Yes, good, okay. So it looks like this is where we put our silage. And we shall see if we can sell it. Hopefully it'll just go in. And this is how we're going to make some summer money. Now, once again, I don't know how much this is going to be worth. I'm not expecting it to be worth a ton. 
Uh, let's see how much we get per bale. If we if we can actually sell them here, I'm hoping we can. Because if not, I don't know how many get these back. But wow, seventeen hundred bucks for four bales. Okay, that's not that. That's not bad. I mean, that's really nothing to sneeze at. I gotta get that arm back up. Will it go up by itself? Yep, it's gonna fold up. I'm not complaining about that result. We're gonna make some big money. I am getting messages on my phone. It's probably my wife. Where are you? Where are you? Where, I'm right here. What do you mean, where am I? All right, anyway. So that pretty much does it for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sell off all these bales. So we have $75,000. The next time you see me, we'll see how much I have. So at the beginning of the next episode, we'll get to see how much I made from the bale sales. In the meantime, have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up. Always help. Bye, guys.